Hey everybody. Uh, of course, as soon as I started filming, he drags it down underneath the leaves. And I moved my light blocking thing out of the way so that there wouldn't be any glare. And now we get both. What we're supposed to be looking at here, other than my reflection, is my figure eight puffer. And I was finally able to get some freeze dry krill. And that's what he's got now. So he really likes them almost as much as he likes the snails. Uh, he does eat the blood worms, as you saw in my previous video, but he really enjoys the shellfish, whether it's a snail or shrimp. I would imagine if I was to cut up uh, some pieces of clam or mussel or anything like that, he would probably really go nuts for that stuff too. So that is just one single freeze-dried krill, and he'll work on that. And as I mentioned in my other video, it's important for him to have the um, shelled animals because of their uh, teeth need to be worn down properly and the shell on the shrimp helps do that so not the best video I know but I can't really uh, help where he took that shrimp once he got a hold of it and then there's nothing I can really do about the glare uh, on the surface there So if you notice what he's doing, he's just taking little bite-sized chunks out of it. He has incredibly powerful jaws and very hard, uh, they're not teeth like you would think of in a normal teeth, like individual teeth, they're teeth plates. Uh, and they basically come down like a set of shears and just chomp pieces of shell off. So that's when everybody is always talking about how aggressive puffers can be and that puffers can kill fish that are much larger than themselves that's how they do it it's one little chomp at a time they can remove whole entire fins and if it's a large enough puffer with a large enough mouth it can actually take little uh, bite-sized chunks out of the fish's body itself and little by little they just stress and damage and kill much larger fish than themselves I'm really lucky with this one he tends to be very mild-mannered and he spends far more of his time looking for food than he does worried about being bothered by anybody. So he knows there's food in the tank now and he's probably going to do his thing for a little while looking to make sure he didn't miss anything, see if there's any more. And what he's really looking for is snails because I gave him a snail a little while ago and uh, he just loves snails. Little uh, common pond snails are his favorite. So there's another video of Butterbean for you. Sorry about the glare again, and again, there's just not much I can do about it. Uh, this is the light I have hanging over it. It's just an LED, and once you get pretty much right here, it's just so much of that glare, you know, it just shows right up on the tank, and there's just nothing you can do about it. So I will let him get on with it. I plan on shooting some more video, a continuation of my discussion on nitrates, and I also plan on shooting some video very soon uh, about this tank here, and again talking more about the water chemistry and what a brackish tank actually is, rather than just showing you what my fish look like while they're feeding. And I don't know if you've noticed, but you can see how big and fat his belly is already from when he started working on that thing a while ago. So they really plump up quick. They have very, very elastic bellies. So stay tuned. Subscribe. That way you won't miss any updates. And uh, very shortly I will be getting on with the uh, more uh, technical video about this brackish tank. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you real soon.